Hey, this is Candle, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. First of all, congratulations with your new EP. Talk to me about the creative process with this EP and, you know, what kind of impact did your um, kind of trials and tribulations with this music industry kind of have on this EP for you? Oh, a lot. <laughs> so basically I ended up in, in a very bad situation with a label and a manager and I had to get it out. It was quite toxic and unhealthy and very unsafe for me. And to do that, I had to do quite a, a long legal battle. And in the process, I, I lost my home and I lost all my income and pretty much everything I'd built. And I ended up just living kind of a nomadic life where I would travel around and stay with friends and take random opportunities. And each place I was in, I ended up with surrounded with some really great musicians and producers that really, I guess, took pity on me, but also still believed in me and what I was doing. So this EP was made in like six different cities for no money with just great people that wanted to do a song with me just to help me. And as I continued my, my legal battle, I ended up with these seven songs that were done and I was finally free. So I'm like, oh, I guess I can put it together, <laughs> call it an EP and release it independently for the first time. So it came together in a very strange way, but it's kind of a, a cool story and a strange process to make uh, an album. <laughs> Going through those situations, I mean, to those extremes, like I feel like it's hard to kind of still believe in the music and and still want to even pursue in this like how did you still how were you able to still kind of feel that fire uh it wasn't easy i mean like i definitely got depressed and was dealing with a lot of anxiety and mental health issues but i, I mean i had every reason to quit and pretty much everybody telling me to do so um because nobody wanted to see me get hurt anymore but Anytime I would write something, I realized was the only time I felt really good and alive and kind of like I had a, a purpose. And so in all the, the darkness and stress that I was dealing with, if a song would come out, I would actually be smiling again and feel energized and, and could see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I just kept holding on to my love of the creative process and realizing that I'm definitely not in this industry for like fame or money or anything easy because that's just not happening. But what I get out of creating and being able to share with people that connect with what I'm doing is, is all the high I need to continue. As you kind of got to work with these, you know, different producers and in different locations, like how was that experience like for you? And how did you, what did you kind of learn from each individual producer as they kind of worked on your songs? Um, it's kind of cool. I've kind of learned to be a producer myself from just watching so many. <laughs> like I learned Pro Tools from just looking over shoulders and like I kind of know engineering now just from creeping on people. <laughs> but it's definitely like having worked with so many different people, it's it's cool to have a very clear understanding of what I, I like and what I don't like and different uh, ways of going about things. I definitely am into the, the more natural, just wing it, see what magic happens kind of approach than the overproduced, do it a million times situation. So like the latest single um, off the EP called Spell, I wrote and recorded with this amazing British producer named Youth who did like the Verve Bittersweet Symphony and stuff. <laughs> He's so cool. He basically invited me over for tea and he was like, do you want to go record a song and write a song right now together? And I'm like, yeah, okay. And we did it all in one day on the spot. And just being put in that situation is something I would have never normally done. I would have been too anxious and scared and felt the pressure, but I was like, okay, here I am. He wants me to write a 
lyrics and melody right now and come up with some chords and he's looking at me and I don't want to let him down. So I just did it. So I just kept pushing myself in uncomfortable places to, <laughs> to figure out how to do this. But it's cool because, you know, when people push you in ways you wouldn't push yourself, you, you end up with results that you wouldn't normally get. That is really cool, Verb. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. And that's cool that you get that opportunity because I feel like once they hit that level where they've worked with so many big names or they've had that hit single, I feel like it's hard to get them, um, to just book them in the first place. But like the fact that they reached out to you is like, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, def it's definitely but like- in Like a very honest and vulnerable position where I'm like, I have nothing to offer. I no longer have a label, a manager or any money. And they're like, well, geez. I like your voice. Do you want to come over? <laughs> okay. That's cool. And that's, that's one of the things that kind of, um, that caught my attention when I first listened to the EP that your voice, like it's not something that like, it's not something, it's something new. It's not something that you've heard before. So talk to me about kind of discovering your sound and, and just creating your voice and the artist that you are. Um, yeah, it's funny. I wish I could hear my voice from different ears. Cause I just sound like me to me, but. Yeah, I was definitely a late bloomer. I always loved writing, but I didn't really figure out how to sing until my early 20s. A lot of it was a confidence issue, I think, but I never had a music lesson in, in high school and stuff. I was too scared to even join choir. <laughs> like, I was so, I would never make a sound out loud. And I just ended up with all these songs and no one to sing them and kind of forced myself to learn how to do it a vocal out of desperation of wanting these songs to be heard <laughs> and through that I kind of started figuring out what I could do with my voice and I kind of taught myself to sing by learning all the songs of all my vocal heroes like Billie Holiday and Sarah Vaughn and all these timeless crooner queens where I just tried to imitate them and through that I kind of realized I do actually have a, a jazzy voice and I can do like crazy vibrato and I like found my range. I'm like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> now I love singing. <laughs> so, so did you kind of discovering your voice influence the type of music or the genre that you would be like writing about or, or kind of performing? Um, probably. I wasn't really aware of it, but... Um... <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely a, a sucker for all the old jazz records and really like dramatic Bond songs and stuff like that. So I'm sure that influence is ingrained in me. <laughs> <laughs> How did you challenge your vocals on this EP? Um, trying to think of more just being working with these people um, and feeling like I am too in a like situation where I feel too lucky to fight anything or say no, if you know what I mean? So like singing spell, I was just trying something on the bridge and the producer youth, he kept saying like, higher, higher, go higher. And if I had been more comfortable, I'd been like, that's out of my range. I won't do that. But I was trying so hard to impress him that I kept, like, kept going and found out I could hit high notes I didn't know I could do <laughs> and the song Better Man that I did is very uh kind of screamy and yelly because the producer there was like this is a song where you should be angry and like I want to see your face mad and I want to hear your throat hurt and I'm like okay <laughs> so definitely just being open to like trying things and getting out of my comfort zone and and seeing what works and being surprised that things work that I wouldn't have thought of. I feel like now when you work on new music, I feel like you're gonna, if it's not, if it's not as crazy as those previous producers, it's not gonna work for you. Well, I did a <laughs> whole new record since then. So. <laughs> oh, and, man. and we did, yeah, there's another 12 songs coming. <laughs> That's amazing, with these same producers? No, um, actually the assistant and engineer that worked with youth in London, uh, he and I kind of became best friends and he's a brilliant composer. 
And we, for fun, decided to try and write a Bond theme song and realize that we work really great together. <laughs> he he's kind of has all those qualities that, that really help me be the best that I can be as an artist, where he pushes me to do things. And he's like, no, I know you can do it. No, no, you can sing that. No, you can do something better. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We came up with a whole new record in, in March pretty quickly. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool. Well, let's make sure that we focus on, on stick around right. <laughs> before, <laughs> before we, yeah, before we jump on to the next one. Now, you know, for those listening to, to this album, what do you want your audience to get out of it or this EP? Um, I mean, I, I always just like when anyone can relate to a song and thematically there's a lot of, uh, subjects about abuse and empowerment and and kind of coming into your own independence and strength and I think that's something a lot of people can relate to and trying to learn how to cope with with your own depression and fears and and realize that you can be in charge of of your happiness and your own life and unfortunately that's something that took me forever to learn is that I always felt like a victim for most of my career and most of the situations I ended up in so yeah I guess I hope people take away some sort of feeling of strength and empowerment when they listen to it that's amazing and uh, you know congratulations once again with the EP I like I said like the moment I played it I got stuck in it I didn't want it to end I didn't want to listen to anything else I just wanted to it to repeat and repeat so you got me hooked so <laughs> congratulations <laughs> didn't even <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know you didn't even know i existed so now you do <laughs> I didn't know I was picking any to be honest <laughs> <laughs> just trying to stay active <laughs> <laughs> well con congratulations with that and yeah no matter what happens like don't give up on music because this is definitely where like you you need to be this is your lane and this is where you need to just continue creating and you know letting your audience know about your music. Yeah, I won't give up, don't worry. Good, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding you to it. <laughs> you should. 